Thank you for your wonderful insights and your great examples on leadership in a changing world. I'm sure everyone values them. The changing age that you talked about, we live in an information age, a digital age, which has changed the paradigm of everything in every possible way. And it's created a slew of new challenges in its wake. And to understand this new age better, I call on the CEO of the blue chip IT company, Capgemini, to talk about the digital advantage outperforming the competition. Please welcome Mr. Paul Hummelin. Thank you first for welcoming me here in this prestigious Delhi and this Global Business Forum. I'd like first to say uh, Capgemini is a French company. Uh, I am actually French. Uh, you will hear that from my accent. Uh, but uh, when I meet with the Indian Prime Minister, he tends to say that I should sit on the Indian side, since within Capgemini, uh, that's a little challenge for my predecessor, we have 211,000 people, but 106,000 people in India. So more than half of the group headcount sits in India. Why so? Because there could not be any success in IT if you did not build, if we had not built a very strong Indian platform. And what I'd like to consider with you is what has made that incredible success for India during the last 25 years, how should we consider that with the next challenge of the digital age? So why have we seen uh, the formidable competition emerging from India? Uh, you know them, we name them. Uh, Tata, TCS, uh, Infosys. By the way, I have the pleasure to see that Infosys is now headed by a former Capgemini executive. Uh, Wipro, HCL, TechMindra, you name them. Formidable competitors. Because first, this country, we said it, we see it, we can anticipate the future is a unique reservoir of talents, of motivated intelligence. And of course, they could come to technology because this country has decidedly invested in education. And I think that was the condition for the emergence of technology in this country. But there were other factors, notably, uh, absolutely world-class entrepreneurs. Uh, they, India is a country with an entrepreneurial culture, and uh, contrary to some other emerging countries, we have seen the Azim Premji, Narayan Murthy, all the, the TCS leaders, Chandra and the other, an incredible collection of founders that have created these superb collection of players. So combination of education, entrepreneur, and probably in this country, a culture that favors IT logic and mathematic roots of the Indian culture, plus an openness, a willingness to do service. Now the question is, will that be enough to be successful again? in the forthcoming years. Because what we see has changed. The first point is the Indian company, and I would consider not Capgemini as an Indian company, but as a real sister to the Indian company. We started our success, notably in the US, by selling to large companies and by being incredible enabler for productivity, efficiency. 
And I, I saw the, the video that introduced the meeting. Uh, I'm a strong believer in market and profit as the most successful ingredients for productivity and for progress. Of course, we can add regulation, social purpose, but I would not underestimate market and profit. And in the case of Indian success, the quest for productivity was the initial factor. Now the question is, will innovation, will IT be mainly focused in the large clients that are our historical clients, and notably the US ones? And here we see a change of paradigm. Some people said it, the world of IT, the world of technology that used to be computer-centered in 25 years ago, then they became software center, and now the whole world is about data. I hear some Chinese writers thinking China will be the successful country because data is the key ingredient, and that data in China will be like oil in Saudi Arabia. India can compete with China in terms of data. It's a as large a country, progressively a bigger population, a market economy, so more data than anywhere. The question is more about innovation because the disruption, we may today be obsessed by the so-called GAFAM, the Google, Amazon, but I have experienced a life where in the 70s, the obsession was IBM. If you remember uh, the Stanley Kubrick uh, movie, uh, the computer was named HAL. And HAL was just playing with a letter H for I, A for B, and L for M. The obsession was IBM. Then we had been obsessed with the monopoly of Microsoft. Now it's Google and Amazon, and the beauty of IT and the beauty of innovation is we do not know what will be the dominant player in 10 years or in 20 years, but I am comfortable thinking they will not be the one we think of today. So the question is now, after the huge success of India in the service world, can we see an Indian Google, an Indian Amazon, become one of the giants in 2030. For that, you need talents and intelligence, and you have plenty of them, more than anybody. What remains incredible in on the west coast of the US is the appetite for disruption. In the United States, a disruption, this is a country of Schumpeter and creative disruption. This is a country where when there is a change, people don't look backward. Don't, people don't try to protect the existing forces and the existing actors. They rush for the new, they rush for the disruption. That's the challenge for all of us, from old Europe to India and to China. How do we favor the US appetite for disruption? Because that will be the distinguished factor that will create innovation to a large scale. And I think it can be in many places. If you think of it, we can look at a very tiny country, Israel. In Israel, there is an incredible appetite for technology. Of course, Israel engineers are cornered in a tiny country with neighbors that are not necessarily friendly, so they instantly think of the world. Their market is the world market, and they have been a source of innovation. So we should think that what will make India successful, and most probably it's possible, it is within our reach, and as a quasi-India, I will start and try to contribute to that, will be to combine the talents of India with a push for innovation, and today technology no longer stays within the IT department, technology irrigates everything, and to combine that with 
a social acceptance of disruption. I'd like to say before closing that I do not share notably the pleasure of some journalists to scare the world population with the danger of automation and artificial intelligence. I really do not think robots will replace humankind. I think there will be augmented work. What we see is in the future of work, we will have engineers, but we will have people with emotional intelligence that will be another domain for human excellence. Because people praise and need human contact. And the next challenge for our education system will be to select experts of emotional intelligence. IQ will not be the one and only criteria for success and investment. We need emotion, we need intelligence, we need to be all together to build the future, which is why Capgemini has invested in its social responsibility, trying to transform all our 200,000 people in architects of a positive future, favoring an engagement, volunteering for bridging the digital divide. So I'd rather say it positively. Digitization should not be seen as a danger for mankind, but digital inclusion will be always to improve the quality of social care, to improve the involvement and the connection for an aging population with the rest of the society, to deal with climate change, to deal with social inequalities. Thank you.